Hey, Caitlin, before we get to this episode, do you know who's bringing it to us this month? Softride Equine Comfort Boots. Absolutely. Softride has been one of our longest standing sponsors at the Team Ripping Journal, and that's because they really believe in the way um, that we cover the sport. They mm-hmm. believe that coverage of the sport grows the sport, expands the sport, and they just kind of benefit in the long run. So I don't know if you guys have ever, I'm sure you see all of our posts on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat about Softride boots and why all the guys are using them. Well, Softride sends us the boots. We give them to the best guys in the world, and they use the crap out of them. And they um, we're like dealers. We pull yeah. into a rodeo or a team rope in, and they come running to my rental car, usually, because it is usually full of boxes of soft rides. And I hand them out like candy, and these guys love them. They eat them up. And that's because, I mean, I don't think people realize they aren't just cushion for your horse's feet. They pump blood up and down the horse's legs. And that hemodynamics is what naturally keeps the horse's foot in top condition. So it keeps the blood flow up the leg. It cuts down on inflammation. It keeps, um, it ups your circulation. So they're really key. And I think at the commercial break, we're going to tell you more, especially about soft rides and ice bus. Hi, Caitlin. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Score. This is the 17th episode of the Team Roping Journals podcast. And we have a good friend on the podcast this time. This is not just a an interview with a stranger, and I hope that shows. This is Clint Summers, who we are so excited, Caitlin and I both, that he has made his first Wrangler National Finals rodeo. Clint is an IPRA world champion a couple times over. Um, he is from Florida. and George Strait champion. He is a George Strait champion, of course. And he... Once upon a time, got stranded at our house. So we got to know Clint. Um, and I want to kind of tell you that little funny story, and that kind of makes him making the NFR this year even more special. Um, early last June, when Caitlin was just an intern here at the Team Repping Journal, which actually it was spin you were an intern at Spindle. It was spin- win at that time. At that time. Um, Caitlin was off at some amateur rodeos, and I was watching the baby at the house on a Sunday morning. And... All of a sudden, I got a frantic phone call from a breakaway roper friend of mine who said, Hey, Clint Summers is just wrecked his George Strait tuck in the middle of Denver. He's sitting on the side of the road. He needs somebody to come get him and his horses. They've been on, his horses have been on the trailer for 12 hours, and they're stuck in Denver. So <laughs> I hopped in my pickup, left my, na- my kid with the neighbors, and <laughs> headed down to Denver and hooked up to Clint's trailer. His poor George Strait truck was trashed. Oof. It was not pretty. And Clint and his driver, Jimmy, hopped into my truck. Complete strangers, mind you, at the time. I had never met this kid from Florida who was trying to make the finals that year. Um, And hauled him to my house. And he left to rodeo, but kind of called that home base Mm -hmm. um, all summer. And then he comes back now, and, and he's always welcome at our house. So I have been pulling for this kid for two years now, and I'm so excited um, that him and I got to chat about how special this qualification to the finals was. And, you know, uh, Clint left his backup horse at the house for us last summer, and Caitlin got to rope calves on him and heel on him, and he was a lot of fun. He definitely helped me out last summer. <laughs> Mine were crippled, so yeah, Caitlin. thank you, Clint. I cannot appreciate it enough. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen, anybody seen that meme that goes around Facebook about somebody who rides somebody else's horses and then decides that they are theirs. Caitlin is the pro at that. You can ask <laughs> just about anybody. Um, so, yes, yeah, we, re- we renamed Clint's horse. He became our own. Done that uh, with two of them yes, now. Yes, she's done that with two of them now. Um, <laughs> so she, her and, her and uh, tow truck, as we call yes. him, we're very close. So we owe Clint a lot of thanks, and, and he's just kind of a, a welcome a welcome face around our place. So it was really nice to talk to him about this. It's going to be fin- fun to watch him in December, too. Yeah, it's going to be special. I think everybody in the um, 303 area code and, oh, yeah. and the 80621 zip code in Fort Lupton is a Clint Summers fan, and we're excited. I mean, and I know you'll hear it in this interview, Clint and I talked about that moment when Eric Rogers destroyed his knee at the timed event this year. Oof. My heart just sunk for Clint. I had a tear in my eye. Like, I was so scared for him because that was just when he clinched that amazing partnership mm-hmm. with Eric. I mean, it was literally the next day that Eric destroyed his knee. Yeah. So we are <laughs> we're really happy to watch him, um, and we hope you all enjoy this because I think you'll get a lot out of this interview because Clint didn't come from the middle of Texas. He wasn't 
just right away um, the best in the world. He didn't get the best partners right away. He got great partners. I don't mean that. But, I, <laughs> I mean, no disrespect to his early partners. Um, but the world champs weren't just lining up right away. He kind of gutted it out and worked hard and got where he was because he deserved it. So mm-hmm. He definitely works hard and is very humble about mm-hmm. it, too. Yeah, so... I am. I hope you enjoy this interview. Um, take some time, listen to it. And by the way, we really need you to leave us reviews and tell your friends that you love the score. They help out a lot. Yeah. And I'm, we do look at them. We look at everyone, and I internalize everything you say. If you say mm-hmm. you hate it, I lose some sleep. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, thank you all for listening, and please leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher, however you're listening. Thanks, Enjoy. Everybody. Enjoy. Let's get started. Welcome to the score. Sweet, sweet. Happy <laughs> to be here. Good. Good, good. Um, so tell me, Clint, how many years have you had your card? I got my car. I had a permit. Uh, um, I had a permit for two years. Mm-hmm. So, and I got that in 2000, let's see, 2011. Maybe 2010. 2010, I got a permit. 2011, 2010, 2011, I had a permit. And mm-hmm. 2012 was my rookie year. So, and who did you rodeo with the first few years? Uh, first few years, I rode with, uh, I had several different partners. Um, but kind of my main partner, I rode with a lot. I had, I rode with Nelson Linares a lot. And uh, Manny, I rode with Manny quite mm-hmm. a bit as well. Uh, all down here around the house, but and then there were several other guys that I wrote with quite often too. But Manny and Nelson, I wrote with them a whole bunch. Mm-hmm. And Manny had rodeoed forever. What did you learn rodeoing with Manny? Uh, Manny taught me a lot. Uh, honestly, um, he, you know, I was just a kid coming along, not really paying attention, this and that. And luckily, he took care of everything. Same as Nelson. I mean, they mm-hmm. took care of the entering and all that stuff, and. They, uh, I guess they, they kind of taught me to be a little more responsible and, and things like that, you know, things I never really cared to pay attention to or, or things. And, and, uh, them guys, they, they, uh, they kind of just took me along and showed me what I'm supposed to do, you know, not necessarily made me do anything, but definitely showed me mm-hmm. the responsibilities to rodeoing. And there's a lot of them. Uh, I still lack on some of them today, but <laughs> um, they dang sure they they showed me quite a bit coming up. And you definitely amateur rodeoed a whole bunch. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I did. I amateur rodeoed a lot. Uh, I went to the IPRAs and and stuff like that. And which is like huge it, down there. I mean, yeah, that was... it's it's big down here, and uh, you know. Like, whenever I first got my permit and stuff and, and growing up, even, like, through high school, I didn't high school rodeo much. Um, I went to a lot of amateur rodeos, and my and my dad and them, uh, he felt like until I didn't, until I could go there and win, I didn't need to be out there rodeoing on the road because no matter if it's, it's tough at the amateur rodeos or not, you know, if it, you know, it still, it teaches you how to win. And there's more to there's more to rodeo than just jumping out there. I know if you rope good, that that's a plus. But you got to learn what it takes to win uh, in smaller setups. And and when you when you get that figured out, then heck, try the next step up. And and the smaller setups. I know you maybe weren't necessarily talking about the exact setup we were talking about with with IPR rodeos. But right. what was the difference from going from those track rodeos, which so many of them are, to to learning how to, you know, uh, well, the big arenas and all the different setups at the PRCA. If anything, I would probably say my first deal would be probably horsemanship uh, at them little track rodeos. And, you know, it's the guys, they, the bears short, they come, they're coming over to shoot with it most of the time. So, and the, there ain't much left fence. I mean, when they turn, it's right there. Mm-hmm. So you kind of, you kind of had to set things up to throw fast. There wasn't much. Like it now, like at the pro rodeos out west, and you know during the summer there's a lot of longer scores and stuff like that. Steers are big, strong. You have to ride your horse uh, a little more and get yourself in a little better position. As when at the higher rays or or you know any amateur rodeo, it's fast like that. It's just 
you just try to get there and heal two feet. The others, you, you know, you got more more going on. You gotta you gotta get yourself set up a little different. And then getting yourself set up to go out west. Um, how did you make that transition? Like, I mean, just the logistics of getting horses and and a place to call home in Texas. And how did that process go for you? How many years did it take? You to know, get it there? it's really took. A while, honestly. Um, my first year out there, I, I uh, my rookie year, I rode with Arky Rogers, mm-hmm. and uh, he had a place, and um, so I, I just stayed with him. And then pretty much everybody I rode with, I just kind of stayed with them for a couple years, and you know, plugged my trailer in or whatever, and just where I could practice with them. And uh, I've just now got where I got me a little house and everything out there, and so it took this long to get my own place and be there full time. Other than that, I just, you know, I kind of had whatever horse I rodeoed on at the time. I had normally had me one heel horse and a couple mm-hmm. practice horses. And uh, I just did whatever I could to get by, honestly. And now I'm lucky enough. I got me three great heel horses um, and I got my own place there. So, I mean, it, it, it's not an easy task. You don't, you don't, you can't just jump out there and you know have a big ranch and and this and that rodeo and definitely you don't get rich doing it you dang sure have fun but you don't just get rich right off top there's so many great guys that rope these days you, there's no guarantee you're gonna win yeah. ever so i mean you just you practice as hard as you can and try to be on top of your game and go to each place and rodeo or jackpot and hope to do the best you can do uh, yeah. What, um, so the horse thing it's taking, I know you and I've talked about it for a couple of years now, putting together horses and you really made a big jump this year in what you, what you're riding. I mean, mm-hmm. not, and not saying that Smurf isn't amazing. Cause I want to talk about Smurf and learn where he came from and everything, but you bought little Kim. Tell yeah. me about kind of the, the journey horse wise. Um, you know, I only had Smurf for two years now. And he's been awesome. He's tough. You know, he's put up. He's heck. He's had to do practice sessions, <laughs> jackpot rodeo, everything. But uh, luckily, luckily, I had my parents behind me. They they do anything and everything for me. And uh, before the summer of this year, I was needing me another horse to help Smurf. And I've always liked Little Kim a lot. Ever since my rookie year, I seen her. Justin Davis was riding her. I can remember just always liking that horse. And I need another one, and I tried a pile of horses. and just, So many. You know, I, a lot of good horses, but not the horse I felt like was one for me. Mm-hmm. You know, that I mean, it's a lot of money. All of them, and I, like I said, I'm not, not saying any of them was not worth the money because the price of horses these days, they were definitely worth the money. It just wasn't, wasn't for me. And uh, it was a week and a half before I had to leave to go to Eric's to practice before Reno. And... Uh, Little Kim popped in mind. I knew I hadn't seen Patrick Ryder much. I texted him, and he said, "Yeah, I still got him." So I went over there, rode her, and and then I ran maybe five steers on her, mm-hmm. and I knew right then. I mean, it was one of the easiest heel horses I ever rode in my life. I knew right then she was a little older, but I knew that if I bought her, I had nothing to worry about. No mm-hmm. matter when I got on her, she knew the the plan, and it, it, I mean. She's the same little horse every time, you know, uh, she ain't the fastest, but she's going to give you the same throw every time. And that means a lot when you're out there rodeoing. Yeah. And you, but you did stay on Smurf most of the summer. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I, we first went out there, I rode Smurf at BFI and then I rode Kim at uh, a few rodeos there at first, but then pretty much throughout the whole summer, I, I rode Smurf. Mm-hmm. And where did Smurf come from? You said you've had him for two years. Uh, Smurf come from a fella from um, Lano, Texas, Mr. Brad Thurman. I've known him since I stayed down there with Arky when we roped in 2012. Yeah. And uh, I always liked that horse. And he never never wanted to sell him, never wanted to sell him, never wanted to sell him. And uh, I tried to head one year and sold all my heel horses. So then when I went back to healing, I didn't have a horse. And I committed. That's when I finally fully committed to rodeo and my dad told me that if if you want to commit you pick the hill horse and i'll get him for you so sure enough i call mr brad and we go back and forth and 
finally gives in and lets me try him. And man, <laughs> that horse, he's just amazing. He's, he's so tough and he gives me all he's got every time. And, you know, I, I'm sure, I sure appreciate him a lot. Now you said something interesting there. I want to go back to, you said when I decided to fully commit to rodeoing, what other options were on the table as you were kind of growing up? Was there anything else? Well, uh, you know, I, my mom and dad wasn't going to make me do anything. They, they didn't want me to rodeo if I didn't want to do it. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as a kid, I roped every day. It was dang sure a dream of mine to make the NFR. And then I kind of got out of the rodeo for a little while, half butt, you know, kind of just back and forth. And I liked the, I, for a while, I liked the idea of rodeoing, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to put everything into it. And to go out there and to compete against some guys, you have to put everything into it. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are. Uh, if you don't, I'm sorry, but you, all you're doing is wasting your money. And so I would go back and forth and, I'd go out there and rodeo for a little while, and then I'd come home, and I'd want to stay home for a little while and, and goof off and, and not rope and stay on top of my roping like I should. So whenever I say committed, when I committed, I got that horse, and I stayed in Texas full time. There was no coming home. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked to mom, dad, and family. I talked to them on the phone. I didn't get to come home. Um, I might have come home once or twice a year. I stayed out there full time and went to every jackpot or anything I could go to trying to get on top of my game and hope that one of the top headers would need to run and uh so that's kind of what i mean by it because i mean like i said for several years i I liked the idea of rodeoing and trying to make the nfr but i wasn't putting a hundred percent into it all right everybody thanks for listening to this episode so far i hope you're enjoying it um, I want to talk to you first about our sponsor, um, Soft Ride Equine Comfort Boots and Soft Ride Ice Spot. So I want to tell you a little bit about the Ice Spot. Horses are just like humans when it comes to being top athletes. LeBron James, Serena Williams, Tom Brady, they are all in ice after competition. Um, they could be in any of the highest, they could be in hyperbaric chambers, they could use all the best technology in the world, but when it comes down to it, after a game, they ice down. So when you can't afford to put your best horse on the bench, whether it's at a World Series or at the short round at Pendleton, icing is the best way to help them recover quickly. Icing is a cheap, effective, natural method for taking the edge off of pain and decreasing inflammation, and that in turn speeds up your horse's recovery. Cold therapy will decrease edema in an injured or inflamed area, minimizing the damage to the tissue. Icing your horse's legs at night after roping will get them ready to perform the next day. This really special thing about the ice balls, though, that you're not going to get in any other ice boot or ice product, is that they add the deep gel orthotics to the bottom of the boot. There's channels running in those orthotics that allow the cold water to flow under the hoof, cooling the sole of the foot, which then in turn pumps the horse's blood even farther back up the horse's leg than even the boots go. Even more, that deep gel orthotic promotes the horse's natural ability to load and unload weight from the foot. That loading and unloading, meaning shifting a weight from one side to another, is what keeps the horse's blood flowing to the foot, pumping back up the leg, which in turn promotes a healthier, more dynamic foot. No foot, no horse, right? So all that means that the soft ride ice boots have a two-fold approach. That ice slurry cools the leg and reduces inflammation, while the deep gel orthotic helps the horse pump its blood back up through its body to increase circulation and speed recovery. It's a really unique approach, and it pays off in a big way. Plus, a lot of guys on the road that are using these ice spas, they're hooking up their air compressors to the boot, and they're pumping that water through the boot, kind of like a, an actual spa. Um, so that increases the circulation even more. If you want to get one of these boots, go to softrideboots.com. That is where you can find out all about them, how to order them. You can get them through some vets, and you can order your regular soft ride boots there too. Now enjoy the rest of the interview. Now, there's, there's so many things I want to talk about that you kind of just kind of we've passed over, but you just said you're kind of waiting for one of those top headers to need a run. Well, you, you got, you had a great partner in the winter yeah, and then just so happened that the reigning world champ needed a run yeah, and then yeah. you watched him destroy his knee like <laughs> yeah. a day after <laughs> you guys decided to rope. Yeah. When, when Rogers got hurt at the time event, I told you this, I was sad for Rogers, but my heart broke for you. Like, 
You have no idea what was going through <laughs> my mind. I was like, I know. I, I seen him down there laying in the arena. I'm like, I know this ain't happening. Surely, <laughs> surely it's just hurt. It's just a sting or something. <laughs> but I, I know good and well by looking at him that it's not. But I'm trying to tell myself that it is. And, and I'm like, it was bad. <laughs> Golly, I don't know. I don't know what to do now. You know, maybe then then it goes through my mind. Maybe maybe it ain't meant for me to be rodeo on. You know, mm-hmm. and then but then he goes in, gets surgery, and, and comes back way faster than they thought he ever would. Yeah. And now here it is. I'm I'm going my first NFR. He got me there, and and yeah, I don't know. I feel like it, all the work, hard work and everything, it pays off because, like, like I said, they didn't think that he would be back roping near as fast as he was. Mm-hmm. And and here it is. Like I said, he's taking me to my first NFR. And you had Bubba there in the, in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. When, and, uh, when Eric got hurt and had surgery, I was just sitting around the house not doing much, just practicing. And um, there was a couple bigger rodeos come up, and Bubba needed to run. I was like, you know what, shoot, I can – I'll go to these couple and, you know, uh, better ones and uh, try it out with Bubba and try to win a little money while I'm waiting on Eric. And it mm-hmm. went good. Uh, Bubba, he had's great. And we, we had quite a bit of success together. And, uh, but, no, I was I was dang sure a train wreck there for a little bit thinking <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. That was a bad day. That was such a bad day. It was a bad day. day. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really glad that this year there have been guys like you and Bubba and Cole Davidson who are just hanging in there every year so close, and it seems like the tide shifted this year. It's a tide change, and I'm really glad for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, and so you've got Little Kim and you've got Smurf, who both Mm -hmm. have some age to them, correct? Correct. uh, Little Kim is 17. Mm Mm-hmm. And then Smurf would be 13, I believe. 13. So what do you do for them? How do you keep them sound? How much of a battle is that? And what have you learned about keeping them sound since you've been kind of full-time committed to this? Well, there's a whole lot. Uh, you know, I try to I try to actually take care of them for once nowadays <laughs> and uh, keep them on good Purina feed and dang sure make sure they have their soft ride boots on the trailer. And um, I was lucky, lucky enough to get me an ice boot this year. And so anytime we was down, whether they need it or not, their their legs was iced down and, mm-hmm. you know, and just trying to help them any way I possibly can. And then um, I got on with Team OE this year, mm-hmm. and they, they've got me some supplements, some joint juice and stuff. And I'm going to tell you, it makes a heck of a lot of difference. Um, I never, I've never been one much on supplements and all that stuff. And just growing up, we fed them, mm-hmm. you know, good grain and, and hay, alfalfa, but never supplements. But I'm telling you, you can feel a difference. Um, it feels like they, they just feel a lot better, you know. Uh, I guess it would be like one of us, you know, if we're a little tired or something and, and taking something. Mm-hmm. You, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't know the difference until you've done it, I guess, what, what I'm trying to say. Sure. Cause, because I I was one to never do any of that, and then I tried it and put them on put my horse on it, and then two months later, I can feel a difference. Yeah, it's like you don't know what you're missing until right, you, you try it. You don't know it. what you're missing yeah. until you try it. And I just try to keep them on that stuff and, and make sure they're feeling the best they can. And, you know, and, and just I, now i got three horses. I try not to ride one too hard. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> All right, so tell me about getting with Eric. What was that process like? It, it, it didn't come, it wasn't perfect from the start. No, it wasn't perfect. Um, you know, um, we go to Reno and, of course, got high hopes. You know, I'm, I'm roping with the reigning world champ. You know, it's supposed to just be easy, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, we get there and we go to several rodeos and we have just a little bit of success. Dang sure not like we was wanting. And uh, there, there's more than, you know, I get, had to think, sit down and think about things. And there's more to it than just backing in the box. It don't matter if he would have been the eight-time world champ. Mm-hmm. We still got to do our job. Just because I was roping with the world champ don't mean that it was just going to come easy. Still had to back in there and heal two feet every time. Mm-hmm. And we we drew tough there for a little while. Don't get me wrong. And and uh, out there roping against some guys, you got to draw good and you got to use them and do good. I mean, 
That's bottom line. You draw a runner out there, and you, I mean, you're pretty much out of it. Mm-hmm. But um, we did. We struggled a little bit. Uh, I don't think it was more me. I don't think it was more him. Uh, I just think as a team, we struggled, and it took us a little while to click. But then when we found our comfort zone, we, we found a run that we could put together and make pretty consistently. And we didn't win first every time, but we placed a whole lot after we got together. <clears throat> and that really paid off. But it was dang sure it was tough at first. Just uh, like I said, one minute we'd, we'd be fast, and the next five or six we wouldn't catch. Mm-hmm. And then finally we just smoothed things out, and we got a consistent run, and, and it dang sure – it helped a whole lot. And How did that run come together, though? Like, was it practices? Was it talking? Was it watching videos? I'm sure all of it. But It was all of it combined, mm-hmm. honestly, Chelsea. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't get to practice anywhere until uh, right at Cheyenne. We went mm-hmm. through all these rodeos and not got to practice anywhere. And I was fighting my head because I had never felt like I'd roped so many legs in my life. Mm-hmm. And so finally I left. We was at Salt Lake City, I won't ever forget, and I left. We, was, we had a day off and was at runner first one at Cheyenne. And I had just missed at Salt Lake at the WCRA. And I told Eric, I said, man, I got to go practice. So I went and practiced. I drove all night, and or rode all night. Jimmy drove all night. <laughs> and get over there, I practiced the next day with uh, Ty Arnold, which is when I tried junior, my third heel horse. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he headed me some steers. I got the heel, and my confidence was back up. Well, then Eric, he got there the next day, actually, and I got to practice again before the rodeo. And we only ran about eight or nine steers. But in them eight or nine steers, I got more confidence than I mm-hmm. had from the time that I ran my first steer at Reno. From that day on, it was like we had a run we could put together. It just it clicked. It clicked. Yeah. You know, he talked to me a lot He about everything, about our runs. Anything I need to talk to him about, he was good to me. And he was there to coach me along as well because, I mean, I had rodeoed, but I hadn't rodeoed like he had. Sure. You know, and he, yeah. he no matter no matter what, no matter how much you think you know, there's still some other people that know more than you know. Mm-hmm. And so he had lots of little advice and little things he'd help me with. And I think they just, we got them all together and they finally clicked. And that run came along with it. And you were... I don't want to say filling Corey Petzka's shoes, but you were in a way. Are you trying to replicate what Petzka did with him as far as that run? Or do you guys have a different run? Than- yes. And in a way, yes. Uh, I'm not going to say I heal as fast as Corey Petzka because, I mean, he's one of the fastest healers there is. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he's known for that. But, yes, in a way. And, and Eric, and I'm not saying that it was all Eric or nothing, but Eric has a way of setting steers up that if you can figure out your position and stuff, mm-hmm. that you can get up there and he sets them up perfect for that shot if you can get everything down pat. And it's coming more and more and more. Like I mm-hmm. said, I'm not saying that I throw as fast as square pass because I know I don't. It's dang sure a lot easier than mm-hmm. you think it would be because he does do such a good job of not reaching, of reading the barrier and blowing up there and roping and setting him up for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yes, I feel like in a way, yes, we're working towards that. I feel like, you know, I, I don't mm-hmm. feel like this was a one summer or, or half a year deal. You know, I feel like we both plan on roping together for, for a while, you know, and, mm-hmm. and being the best team we can be. But, yes, I feel, I feel like that one day it will be like their team was. Mm-hmm. It is October 31st. Happy Halloween. We are yeah, yeah, like a month, <laughs> a month and a, a week away from you running your first year in the Thomas and Mac. Have you guys talked about it yet? What's the, what's the game plan and what's your practice plan leading up to? Well, our game plan ain't much, uh, but to go in there and do our best, of course, and make that run. Mm-hmm. Not worry about trying to win first every night. You know, we're back in the box. It's hard not to, not mm-hmm. to think about winning first when it pays twenty six thousand a night. But we're we're gonna back in there and we're gonna go at every steer to beat that steer and to do our best we can do. And then at the end of the week, just hope that we placed in every round or as many rounds as we can and see how much money we won. But no, I don't think our practice sessions would be much different. I bought some. I bought a group of bigger. Mexican steers just mm-hmm. for me and I'm going to haul them to Arizona 
but we're just going to rope normal practice in the, just a normal arena. And Eric said he would turn me some faster just every day, but we're not going to set up no small arena or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Um, figured that maybe if we didn't, if we just roped in a normal arena and he turned me a few here and there fast, just where I could get a feel of it. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that way our, our horses would stay a little freer and not get quite as tight for that little arena. You know, it'd be, that'd be horrible yeah. to go in there and first round your horse is already tight. So we're just going to, we're going to practice in a normal arena and, and just, just rope like we do every day. Now, little Kim was really good for Patrick there. I think junior rode her there. Um, are you going to start on her or are you going to start on Smurf? You know, that's a, it is a hard decision because she has been rode there quite a bit and ha- they have been successful on her. Um, but, no, I do not think I'm going to start on her. She's definitely going to be there in case I mm-hmm. need her. But I'm definitely going to have to get on Smurf. Mm-hmm. And he's been there for me. And I feel like that me and him, we're, we got a thing and I'm going to stick it out on him more than likely. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Do you have you thought about how are you going to haze there? Any any plans as far as that goes? Where are you going to try to be? No, no you know, uh, you know, I've been I have practiced a little bit like that when I first got my steers and my big mm-hmm. steers. Um, we did go out. Eric was actually there when I got them, so we wrote them, of course, and mm-hmm. uh, we we went out a couple of them just doing things. And no, I, you know, I'm going to be I'm going to be behind them. Mm-hmm. That way, maybe they stay straight, more straight for him, because I feel like the straighter they are in that little arena, the faster you can be. Sure. And that's one thing, too. Like, with him, I can be a little bit back. And Smurf, he's, he's not the fastest, but he's got enough speed that he will have me there. Mm-hmm. Because Eric, he's not going to run off and leave me. He's going to set him up for me. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to be right behind him pretty much. When they go, I go. And, and uh, just, you know, try to be there for the first hop. Is there a moment that you're looking forward to the most? Like when you found found out that you had your first NFR made, or was there anything you're visualizing? <laughs> like the the grand entry, the right into the box first time. Like what are you thinking about? What's going to make you feel like you really made it? Uh, you know, there's a couple of things actually, Chelsea. For one, I can't wait to hold the back number in my hand. It's got my my name across the the top of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like that'd be an, uh, an awesome feeling. And that's one thing I've always wanted was. One of them back numbers says NFR on it with my name on it. I've, I've always wanted it. But other than that, I think one of the coolest moments would be is whenever I run that first year, December 6th, whenever I back, when I walk in there inside that arena into the box, I think that will probably be the coolest feeling. And uh, you're not going to drive into the fairgrounds or to the Thomas and Max parking area by yourself. Who is going to be with you? In Las Vegas to help? Of course, Jimmy Roland. Uh, he's been there for me forever, ever since I was probably 12, 11 years old. He's mm-hmm. hauled me around, and he's always been around. He's been a great friend to us. He's drove me forever, though, it seems like. Anytime I ever needed him, all I got to do is pick up the phone. He was there, and, and he always had him another business he did. And, and the past two years, Jimmy actually retired from his other businesses and has drove me full time. And uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, having a driver but when you got one that's like family that's there with you all the time it helps out a lot more you know he's been around me forever he knows what my horses do heck he probably knows more about my horses than I do so having him there helping me out that that's going to be pretty great you know and because not only is he just easy family and a driver I mean he's been there with me through all of it pretty much he's seen me he's seen me come up and he's been he's been with me at the amateur rodeos. He's been me at, with me at so many jackpots and practice sessions. It, it'll be pretty cool having him there with me. And your parents are they are they flying from Florida? Yeah, yeah. That I mean, it's gonna be there. Definitely, it's gonna be cool having them out there. You know, and because they've been behind me my whole life. But I don't think I'm sure they'll be in the stands. They'll be pulling in with me. But they are flying out there. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Clint. I appreciate it. You're thank welcome. You. I appreciate being on here. That's awesome. I'm so glad for you. Well, I appreciate it. Okay. I'm pretty excited myself. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. <laughs> All right. Have a good day of practicing. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, everybody. Funny, throughout this interview, I had, it's Halloween day while we recorded this, so you're going to hear it next week, but it's Halloween day. Um, I've been eating pumpkin seeds that my husband made. 
not while I was recording this, but just enough that it made me cough quite a bit there at the end of the interview, so my voice got a little squeaky. <laughs> Hope you don't hear too much of the coughing, but apologies um, after the fact for the, the pepper that was scratching the back of my throat. Um, this episode was brought to you by Soft Ride Equine Comfort Boots and Soft Ride Ice Spas. Don't forget, check out softrideboots.com and put your order in. Treat your horse like the athlete that he is, that the pros use these. Um, everybody uh, is hooked on these boots. The best guys in the world are using them. There will be tons of them at the NFR, and we'll show you how they're helping horses throughout the finals. So thanks, everybody. See you in Las Vegas. <laughs>